So then... Don Nakamura! My name is Sage Blake. I'm a wanderer, storyteller, artist and mature. And we're here with uh, a bit of a weird one. It would also help if I actually transitioned over. But... It comes as no big surprise that I'm a pretty big Mega Man nut. Among the games that I used to play back in middle school, high school, was actually the classic Mega Man games. I still own a copy of the Mega Man Anniversary Collection on GameCube, and every so often I do go back to that just to experience the classics. That or play uh, Power Battle Power Fighters, because those are really good fighting games. Regardless, imagine my jaw dropping to the floor the moment I, hear, I heard that Mega Man 11 was announced several years back. I wanted to pick it up, but I couldn't. Specifically because, one, I didn't have a powerful net computer or means to play it. And two, I didn't have the money. Not having a job kinda does that. <laughs> but yeah. The year is 20XX, at the laboratory of Thomas Light, father of modern robot society. Many hard-working robots have arrived for their annual maintenance checkup. Shenron, hello! Hope you're doing well. Hmm. All systems nominal. You're in great shape, Rockman. All thanks to you, Doc. You built me rock solid! Well, I can hear the construction yard calling. Lock out! <laughs> Good luck out there. Roll, how many checkups are left? Several. But we're skipping, but we're skipping this. The TLDR of this game is... Wily had a nightmare, and flashback to many years back when he was just a university student. During that time, he remembered that his old double gear system kinda bit the dust. Specifically because it was abandoned in favor of Dr. Light's research for independent thought. Wily decides, okay, let's go back to this. Revisit the design, try to use it to its intended purpose. Meanwhile, Dr. Light is running his usual checkups, and then Wily jumps in, kidnaps the robots, and ingrains them with his double gear system. Mega Man volunteers to take it up himself to, to, to try and stop them. The double gear system is kind of cool, honestly. Like... I was a little skeptical about it at first, when it first got introduced. But it makes sense for a game like this. The idea behind the double gear system is make it easier for newcomers to approach Mega Man, and it does its job marvelously in that respect. Because double gear lets you do such things as slow down your perception of time, make it easier to do platforming and finite challenges, provided you're patient. You can also crank up your damage. However, using a gear for an extended period of time will burn you out. When that happens, you lose a couple things, but it's not terrible. You just need to wait around until it, you finally cool down. It is explained in universe that one of the bigger reasons why Dr. Wily's double gear system was rejected was specifically because it posed a risk to robots. It caused them to overheat. And this is a nice way to integrate gameplay and story. You don't want to become hyper reliant on the double gear system because it's not healthy. And especially so if you get down on health and decide to pop both gears simultaneously, which you can do. You will gain the abilities of both the, the both speed and power gear, however, the consequence is severe when that finally when that timer finally runs out. You will be downgraded to a single buster shot, no charge shots, and you will take a slight movement penalty. It's a very risky system. But it's also very rewarding. Ah, crap. 
But yeah, I've played a lot of Mega Man games. I know what I'm doing for the most part on this. And in my uh, practice run of Blockman Stage, I did manage to get to the boss after like three or four continues. But the reason on that was uh, not exactly unfamiliarity with the game. I've seen playthroughs, such as with Rome Mithril. No, it's more the fact that I decided to use Superhero difficulty. And yeah, Mega Man games aren't exactly what you go to for thinking about modifiable difficulty. But lo and behold, ever since Mega Man 9, they've been including it more often within these games, within the Mega Man series. How this game adjusts its difficulty is by decreasing your susceptibility to pits, decreasing the damage and or knockback that enemies produce, giving you more lives, and for the newcomer difficulty, which is the obvious game journalist difficulty, giving you the ability to place your own checkpoints, you know, in case you're new. Slash bad at platformers! I'm not bad at platformers! I promise, I'm not bad at platformers! Every single time that I've tried to do that jump in practice, I've been able to do it perfectly. I don't know why this time is an exception. Oh, really? Jerk. But yeah, when I was practicing earlier in the week, I only played Blockman stage. Every single other stage in the game, Not, I have no idea. Why did I decide to mash that out? I'm a bit. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. But yeah, superhero difficulty. Um, one of the big reasons why I was struggling so much with it is specifically because the superhero takes your difficulty up to 11. Not only do enemies deal a little more damage than usual, not only does double gear take longer to recharge, but in tandem with that, you also have to complete stages without getting as any pickups whatsoever. No health pickups, no weapon pickups, the only pick- uh, no one-ups, or Yasaichis. The only pickups you'll ever see... ...are bolts. Ow. I am getting super reckless. That is not a good look for me. Takes back to the SNS days, renting Mega Man from the movie rental place and binging it. <laughs> Accurate. Like, full credit, Mega Man 11 did also come as a response to Keiji and Afune, who many people misconstrue as the, uh, person behind Mega as the main person behind Mega Man, leaving Capcom to form Comset. As it turns out, uh, KG was not the main person behind Mega Man. Did he do some of the designs for it? Yeah. But it just goes to show that Mega Man, why Mega Man succeeded was a community effort. And it was also... The fact that KG and Fude decided to try and release Mighty Number no. 9, which flopped so badly that we pretend it doesn't exist. Eat that, Evil Eddie. But yeah, Mighty Number no. 9 released, people hated it, and Capcom was like, you know what? We see the writing on the wall, you guys want another Mega Man game. Y'all want another Mega Man game. We'll do that. I give Capcom a lot of flack, honestly, for making a lot of bonehead decisions. 
especially when it comes to some of their bigger to some of their bigger franchises of the modern era. But I at least respect this type of decision to at least do something to cater to fans at least a little bit. It's also why I'm super glad that we're getting uh, the Battle Network collections in 2023. I'm gonna be nutting over Battle Network 4 through 6 all over again, because no apparently not only are there are they re-releasing the Battle Network games in collection form, they're also adding online multiplayer, such uh... <laughs> uh, they finally did it. They finally, finally did it! Ow! Now granted, I'm one of the weird ones where I like Star Force more than Battle Network. But I feel like this at least opens the door for Capcom to consider doing a Mega Man Star Force collection. I can hope. Oh, online multiplayer for the uh, Mega Man Battle Network games. Not sure if you're familiar with those, Shenron. Actually, I should also met I should also ask, is the sound mixing alright? Because I kind of just did this on the fly, and I'm not sure if the game is too loud, or I'm too soft, something, something. made it to the boss area so I can potentially go into a settings tweak. Uh actually the volume was fine. Get to know. Yeah, online multiplayer for Mega Man Battle Network. Um, TLDR, if you haven't tried them. Think of them like... Side-scroller RPGs, kind of, like... I'm not sure if you've seen One Step from Eden, but that game is heavily inspired by Battle Network. Both you and your enemies have like a 3x3 tile grid, you get a bunch of battleships that you can use with a whole bunch of techniques mapped to them. Ranging from typical cannons to spread shots to elemental blades and everything in between. It's super, super fun. Ow. Holy shit, what is that voice? Up! Oh! Hello, Daniel. Hope you're doing well. Oh, Shenron, you are in for a treat. You are in for a treat. Because uh, Battle Network is very, very twitchy, very engaging, and very difficult when you get around to like the harder bosses of the game. All right, you. Do your biddiness. Ow. Really? That hit me? Ow. Yet again, that hit me? E tank. Yep, the Battle Network co collections next year. I am so glad that we're getting online multiplayer for those. Easy.
the one thing I'm a little jipped by is that the digital versions are segmented. So Battle Networks one through three are one is our one volume. Battle Networks four through six are a second volume. I don't like that. It feels very predatory, and I understand why they would do that. But at the same right, why? Just lump them together. It's not that hard. Battle Network games are like what? 400, 500 megabytes? Or is it 400, 500? Yeah, like, sorry, 200 to 300 gigabytes each? And that's not much. If you were to lump all the games together, all six of the games together, that would be maybe like... Actually, yeah, maybe megabytes would... I was completely off, sorry. I'm talking out of my shithole. The, the size of all six... Battle Network games combined together would be less than 5 gigabytes. Sure, they are lumping a lot of, like, uh, artwork and whatnot into there, but that would only inflate the, uh, inflate the amount of space by, like, 20%. I know, Daniel, I got the numbers wrong! <laughs> Horribly wrong! Not just ROMs, they're actual ports. Ready. Yeah, but... The point I'm trying to make is, like... It still wouldn't take up... The total amount of space for the game still wouldn't be all that big compared to some other games that exist in the current era. So there's not too much of a point to split them up. Shield attackers! No, I'm sure they'd exceed one gigabyte. Five gigabytes? Hell no. Because, uh, I've meddled with GBA ROMs in the past, and sure, they are, they, you, they are ports and not ROMs, which means that there might be some rejiggering of various things to make the game smaller or otherwise fix bugs. Hopefully. But it still wouldn't take up that much space. Ow. What am I doing? Alright, I haven't exactly talked about this for a while. So, uh, Acid Man, he's, uh, your drug dealer. One of the bigger gimmicks of this area revolves around these, uh, syringe beasties that are throwing out poison bits everywhere. If the poison bits hit the, uh, chemical, they will, it will slowly change color. When it changes to a green color like that, it will be a damage hazard. Whoop! Cheap shot. Try again. Poor, poor robots. Crumpled to pieces. Just saying, seeing the, uh, desecrated and acid marred body of a met just float by. Kinda creepy. Is it just me thinking that? Yeah, I kinda did speak too soon. I have a bad habit of doing You think things go right, and then suddenly, ow. Ooh, bolt. I want those. Because I'd also like to mention that this game has, like, 
the best parts shop in Mega Man, in classic Mega Man history. The things that they offer in this shop are ridiculous. Some of them are just standard things like climb ladders faster, or better charge shot, better busters. But they also did tweak a few aspects of, say, Mega Man's charge shot. Specifically, while he's in power gear, uh, you might have seen that with the full charge shot, you get pushed back a bit. One of the power-ups that you get reduces that knockback, so you can get that double charge shot with no penalties. Redacted! Hello! Imagine shopping. Yeah, I know, right? Foreign concept. Ow. Pew. Actually, what am I doing? There we go. Now don't fall into the uh, spike through me. Whoop. There we go. Now, don't get into that other spike, me. Better. I've played my fair share of Mega Man games, so I know at least some of the things to expect. It still doesn't mean that I am 100% Brave Man. For the few times that I have played uh, Mag Mammal, that should be pretty self-evident. I am a klutz. And that comes off in my gameplay. Ow. 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 Street past you. Are you dead yet? Ouch! Oh, come on. Come on, you overgrown Tide Pod. Perish. <laughs> yes, it is. It is very accommodating. And hell, even pros use it for, like, speedruns and whatnot. Because the things that you can get up to with it are disgusting. Ow. You know what? Just keep moving. Whoop. Good. Keep to the left. Poor shield attacker. I feel so bad for all these desecrated robots just hanging out in this gunk, you know? Ow! Why? Gek, what did I do to you? I'm trying to be my best mega bud, and then you come along and they're like, no! <laughs> Again. Whew. Junk those. 
attack. Just keep my distance. And time to take care of the giant scrubbing bubble. Triple out. A surprise hug. Thanks. Oh, shit. I just realized. I don't have the veto. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. How did I forget the veto? I had the thing up and everything, and I'm like, Hi. Don't hurt me. Ow. I know, y'all are angry at me for that one. Bye! Thanks. Three. Eat that sniper tail. <laughs> Hug the dirt wreck. <laughs> this just in, this is my new April Fool's name, Derpy Raccoon. Ow. Chew that. Oh right. I haven't meddled with my with my bricks yet. And surprisingly, very adept at using them, despite only just having them. Either that, or I was super lucky with that shot. I'll take the latter. And meanwhile, in the background, there's a uh, vehicle of some type going vroom vroom. He drives a soft bargain, and a minivan. that. Keep myself at a distance. Safe distance. Preemptive jump. Can this giant scrubbling bubble die? No, you're not wrong on that one. I think we did get this game specifically because Mighty Number no. 9 failed. I mean, like, it came along too perfectly, you know? Essentially, Capcom stated, almost de facto stating, yeah, the reason why Mega Man succeeded wasn't just because of KG. And to credit, he already did kind of have bad blood with Capcom in the first place, so I think it was only a matter of time. Ow. You know what? I'll take it. I overshot. That's what happens when you get too cocky. 
Whip. Actually, what am I doing? Refuel the energy on that. Nobody up. Uh, okay, I'll take it. 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 Pretend like nothing happened. Pretend like nothing happened. I didn't get an achievement. I definitely didn't get an achievement. Nothing happened. Nothing important happened. What am I doing? Snap you. Get this bolt. There we go. Beep. No, that wasn't what I was uh, mentioning. One of the achievements that you can get for this game is uh, walk on spikes and not perish from them, if I remember correctly. I've always known that. I play Mega Man games. You went over to you. Don't get cocky. I mean, fair. Okay. Made it to discount... Is it Made it to discount club drug man. I mean, I would like to shred your acid barrier just by my own effort, but... These are really easy patterns. Okay, not so easy patterns. <laughs> Fuck. Phrasing. Oh no, did I say something dirty again? That's just typical of me. One of these days, I will get arrested for this time. <laughs> the babies! It's the baby. I might have, to be fair, I have a bad tendency to do that. With me, it's not a matter of uh, if I'll say something naughty, it's when. I'm pretty sure I've told my co-workers by now, and they've already seen a few examples, that I could get very, uh, dirty. Ow! Sniper Joe? No. You sit there and think about what you did. Go to the scrap pile. You're grounded. Fine. Actually, I can take care of the tinies. No, I uh, didn't get any power ups. Damn. Mm. 
depends on how intentional it is. Also true. Because in some cases, I am intentionally the wrong shoes. In other cases, it's a surprisingly natural slip of the... accidental slip of the tongue. And not today, Spike. You will never claim my life. That orphan Spike will never claim my life. Ah, oh, the 1-Up doesn't respawn. Good to know. Alright, you walking Tide Pod. Someone's asking for help. Don't worry, we'll send help in the next update. Ow! Thanks, Shenron. Ow. You know what? I'm fine with that. Because Mega Man is one of the big kings of jump so tight you poo yourself. I said jumps. Don't get any funny ideas. Also a really nice touch that a fully charged buster shot will actually stagger shielded enemies. Yet again, the uh, little nuances to help rookies. Amazing. And hell, that type of detail also helps pros too. Ow. Just the amount of tricky shit that you can get away with now is impressive. You know what? Fine with that. Good. Whip. I'd also like to mention that jump is super tight. But then again, again. Mega Man is the one of the big ki one of the big retro kings of jump so tight you poo yourself. Ow. Double ow. Again, I am a Mega Man veteran, technically, and some of these jumps still get me to go, ah, ee, woo. Shame. You don't slide through the door anymore. Two out of ten. Yeah. 
Oh, right. If I remember correctly, this guy's weakness is Blockman's weapon. But I kind of like fighting these guys buster a buster. Stray shot that hit me. Hey, Daniel, you say some people? I was one of those people. I love fighting bosses with just the buster. But I also recognize I can be somewhat bad, so I at least give myself the forgiveness of I'm allowed to use charge buster. Good, try to do that for each stage, see if you got three robot masters in nine or ten. Makes sense. Though two pips of health is really, really tiny, and hey, managed. Get equipped with Ass Barrier! It touches all the butts. <laughs> 